I've been slowly working my way through The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky because everyone says it's like the greatest book of all time. And yeah, it's pretty decent so far. It's a bit of a slog in places, I'm not going to lie, but there are some super thought-provoking moments and some really well-written characters which stick with you long after you put the book down. There was one line in this book that I read recently that really made me think. So much so, I decided to make this video about it. So, there's this part when this, like, priest elder guy, he's basically the ultimo super priest. All the other priests have got to eat his shit, basically. He's telling the story of his life. And when he was a child, his brother, who was like eight, had some fucking disease and he was dying. And in the last few weeks of his life, he apparently went insane and he was saying all sorts of crazy shit that was freaking everybody out. He says to his mother, Don't weep, darling. I have long to live yet. Long to rejoice with you. And life is glad and joyful. And she's all like, ah, dear boy, how can you talk of joy when you lie feverish at night, coughing as though you would tear yourself to pieces? I mean, fair point, you have to say. But what he comes back with absolutely decimates her and is maybe the best line in the book so far in my opinion. Don't cry, mother, he says to her. Life is paradise and we are all in paradise, but we won't see it if we would we should have heaven on earth the next day. And everyone round this bed is fucking stunned to silence by this. It's his mic drop moment. So let's try to unpack it. I don't know if I have the requisite intellect for it, but I'll give it my best shot to give some sort of clunky analysis. So this wee boy who is dying and fucking coughing his lungs up nonstop says that life is paradise and we are all in paradise. I guess here he's lifting himself out of his own current position and subjectivity of looking at the world with a more objective view. And it is true that this hour of ours is technically a freak of nature. It's a unicorn in a solar system of barren planets and seemingly a galaxy of lifelessness, light years and light years of hostile conditions which are not conducive to life, we have this little blue oddity floating around, providing the perfect conditions for rivers to flow and lush forests of air cleansing trees and colourful flowers, delicious ripe juicy fruits and nutritious vegetables. Thousands of species of unique, beautiful, weird and wonderful animals are allowed to thrive on this rock. Vast mountain ranges and deep blue seas to explore, and man, who has tried to find his place in this world, in this universe, to forge societies and civilizations, and make some form of sense of the miracle which is his existence. So, so I suppose the wee man's right that this is a paradise. Death is always going to be a part of life, and despite the fact that he has been dealt a shitty hand, he can still see that. Maybe because of his situation, he's able to see it better than the rest, and he is trying to spread the message to his concerned and soon-to-be grief-stricken family. And I think it's what he says next that is the most interesting. He says, we won't see it. We won't see that life is paradise and that we are all in paradise. And this really rings true when we look around the world and we see the death, disease, destruction and depravity which apparently surrounds man's time on this planet and we are aware of the suffering which many millions of people are subjected to each day. It is hard to see a point or a meaning. It's difficult for us to realise the impossibility of the fact that you, I, any of us are even here to draw breath, to see, to hear, to feel. It's like however many billions to one odds against this planet being the perfect distance from the sun to provide life and then whatever the odds are for us evolving from the primordial ooze, then the chances of your parents to have met, and the chances for the sperm which contains your little ungrateful arse to reach the egg, are actually mind boggling. It's like you've won the lottery against every other human on earth, so like an 8 billion in one chance of winning, though actually I think the odds of you even existing are longer than that, but it's like you winning this worldwide compulsory lottery and you win it every day and you didn't even fucking have to buy a ticket. And the next thing he says is that if we would see that life is paradise, we should have heaven on earth the next day. When you really unpack this, what he's saying is that this is heaven. We are already in heaven. The only thing that stops us from experiencing it as such is our perception of reality. And I think deep down, everyone understands the essential truth of this. Otherwise, why would we be scared of death? Why don't people want to die? Why do people fight tooth and nail to survive and remain on this planet? Why do people cry on their deathbed? Surely, if this was the hell that some people would have you believe it is, then people would be praying and begging for death but we aren't. And although all of us knows on some level that the words of this little boy from this novel are correct, he's also right in saying that we will never realise it. We will never be able to treat this planet as the heaven, the paradise that it truly is, so that the heaven on earth that we should have will never materialise.